Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all. Hello, Pascos. As we prepare our hearts for worship, I'd love to just pray over us. So please stand as we pray together. So let's pray, shall we? Uh, Lord, we, um, we thank you for your presence with us here this morning. As we come through these doors, Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to surrender everything and everyone to you, Lord, so that we can just focus on you, leave our uh, thoughts and uh, rush, rushed lives behind, Lord, and just pause and enjoy your presence as we worship you together, Lord. And while we're still praying, I just want to read Psalm, pray Psalm 63 over us. Oh Lord, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your glory and power. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. Let's do that now as we praise our God together, shall we? Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. It's wonderful to see you. Let's sing together.
name above the battle The undefeated Savior stands with me The fighter for the weary The Lamb of God, the Lion-Hearted King Over every broken heart Hope is rising through the dark Over every weary soul Breathe miracles Heaven come and hell retreat Signs and wonders be you and I thank you for all the miracles that you do in our lives Lord and even the ones that we sometimes don't even realise you have your hand over I pray and I ask Lord that you would make us really aware of your presence in those moments Lord Jesus and may you please continue to make us aware of your presence even today as we come to praise and worship you Lord Jesus and prepare our hearts for Michael's message Alright MPK it's time for you to head out um, family, we have programs for our primary school age kids still today. Um, unfortunately, because of people being away on their lovely weekend, um, we don't have volunteers available today for everyone um, un- outside of primary school. Um, but that space is available for you to take your kids if you would like to. But let's continue um, to have a heart of worship. And as we sing this next song, May it be a prayer that we sing as we invite the Holy Spirit to be amongst us today, that we'd be aware of His presence because He is here. But may we be aware that He is with us and may He speak to us in this space. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord and I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the glory God is what 
Yes, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence with us here this morning. Thank you that each one of us who calls you, Lord, has the Holy Spirit in us, Lord. And we pray that your kingdom would come, that you would fan your spirit into flame into, in each of our lives, Lord. Show us afresh your love for us, we pray. Oh, Lord, it changes everything, your tangible presence with us. So we surrender every part of this service to you, Lord. We ask that you would have your way here today. In the mighty, risen name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, please turn around and say hi to someone you don't know, preferably. Yep. So officially welcome. Good to see you all here this morning. My name is Gary. I think you all know me, but if, for those of you who don't, I'm one of the pastors here. Good to see you all this morning. There's quite a few new people here this morning. So a special welcome to you. We just love to have you here. We hope you're blessed by your time with us. Um, of course, welcome to those on live stream as well, including my mum. So hello, mum. Good to see you on live stream. Um, it's just great to have so many of us here today. We actually have a bunch of us away today as well at the uh, weekend away down in Bustleton. So quite a few of our leaders are there this morning as well. There's 75 people, I think, down there. So just trust they're having a wonderful time down there as well. So after the service, as always, please stick around. We'd love to talk to you, especially if you're new. Just come and have a chat to us. Hang around for a tea or coffee um, after the service. And I've got a challenge for us regular family members. Please come and have a chat to someone. Talk to someone who you don't know in the foyer, all right? Ask them about their story. It'd be great for us to... Um, make the new people feel welcome. As always, we have a connect point in the foyer. If you'd like to learn more about the life of the church, you can talk to the people there. They're really friendly. They can help you out with that. So please take a look at the screens. We've just got some information about the Creative Ministries Info Night coming up soon. So take a look at the screens. Thank you. Romans 12, 1 and 2 is urging us in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. I am so grateful to the Lord for a team of volunteers in our creative ministries who faithfully serve our church family 52 Sundays a year. And here's what some of them had to say about their involvement. I've always had a real passion and love for music and the arts in general. And I feel personally for myself that the best way that I feel connected to God is through um, worship. And honestly, when I joined the team, I didn't know too many people, but everyone was so welcoming and just made me feel at ease. And it didn't even feel like I was joining a team. It felt more like I was joining a family. And it gave me a real sense of belonging. And um, I felt even more connected into the church family. Especially as uh, someone who's been kind of um, an independent sort of hermit a lot of my life, it's been pretty overwhelming experience in terms of finding a sense of family and a sense of belonging. This is, this is the stuff that I've been doing for so long, but now I get to do it as a part of something that's actually important and something that's bigger than myself. I've met so many people in such a short amount of time who I love and people who just who have a genuine interest in helping others and being a part of something bigger than themselves. I feel really, really blessed and really gifted to be a part of what I feel is, is becoming a, a, a family. I am in awe of the dedication and talent of our Christian Ministries team. Being able to provide food and refreshments for the team between the service is a small part that I can play to bless them. My attitude to volunteering is that many hands make light work and the more people we have um, showing their support for the team um, makes it less of a task for a few people. When we lead worship as a team, when we serve as a team on any given Sunday, we do so to bless others using our God-given talents and to glorify His name. I would recommend you to join the CM team uh, because if God has given you a talent to, 
um, to serve in music or to serve in dance or to serve in AV. Um, it's a responsibility and a privilege um, for you to utilize those talents to bless people for His glory. So um, join the CM team. You'll learn a lot. You'll have fun. And um, we together can serve together for His glory. If you have a heart to serve with your creative gifts and talents, please come and join us on Tuesday the 21st of February for our CM Info Night in Room 10. I look forward to seeing some of you there. God bless you as you seek to follow Him. Thank you, Jonathan and team. Just three other quick announcements. The first one, if you're a senior, uh, you probably know that your day for meeting here at church has changed to Monday. And just a reminder that your first seniors meeting this year is tomorrow here at church, the 20th of February, okay? Um, the second thing is next Sunday, the 26th of February, we're having a church family picnic um, at Katajini Park, which is in Melville, just down the road off Marmion Street there. Um, it's, I believe it's called Dr. Seuss Park for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, but that's the, perhaps the locals' name for it. Um, so please come and join us after the second service. It's really informal. You don't need to register or anything. Just come down, bring everything, and there'll be a huge Mount Pleasant flag there so you'll see where we are. And just come and join us if you want to next Sunday for that. That would be fantastic. And last but not least, I wanted to update you all on, um, on the special giving day we had last Sunday. So many of you would know that we had a special giving day. We gave towards three causes that God had put on our heart um, for the church this coming year. And, um, you know, we're just delighted to let you know that as a church family, we've raised $133,000 so far towards that. So let's just praise God, shall we? Yeah. It's just wonderful to be part of a family. We're all following God together. It's exciting, actually, to be part of a family doing that. So donations are still coming in, which is fantastic. And we'll communicate the breakdown of all the donations across those three projects in the coming weeks. If you haven't had a chance to give and you want to, a few people have been asking us about that as well. We have the giving form still available at the info desk out there as well. So please grab one of those. Now, some of you may remember that the yearly target for these three projects is 300,000. And I just wanna say two things about that. Firstly, um, we're only two months into this year, okay? So it's an amazing result that we're almost halfway to towards our target, only two months in. And we're just so praising and thank thankful to God for this, okay? So our overwhelming heart is, yes, God, that's fantastic to see what you're doing in the church family. But more importantly, we just wanted to encourage us all, including me, that God is our provider. Um, we can trust in Him, okay? And as a leadership team, we're confident. In fact, we're convinced um, that God will provide the resources He needs for His projects in His church. Okay, so um, our role is, as leaders is just to keep in step with God and for all of us to just be trusting Him and praying, looking to Him, and He will provide our needs as He has done many times over the 60 years in the life of this church, okay? So let's just pray together now, shall we? Lord, I want to thank you for your faithfulness to us here, Lord, for uh, your faithfulness through this special giving day. Lord, it's wonderful to see you working in people's hearts and people obeying you, Lord. It's just beautiful, Lord. We also want to thank you for your faithfulness to us here over the last 60 years. Even this building we're in, Lord, is testament to uh, your faithfulness to us over many years. More importantly, Lord, uh, we want to recognise your faithfulness to us through Jesus, who died and rose again to set us free, Lord. It makes our hearts rejoice. We just love you, Lord, so much, and it's a privilege to follow you. Lord, we pray for those at the weekend away in Bustleton, that they would have a blessed time uh, getting to know each other, uh, but more importantly, experiencing you, Lord, through friendships um, through nature, just through relaxing and resting and being still in your presence down there at Bustleton, Lord. May they come back refreshed and replenished and more aware of your presence with them than ever before. Lord, our, our minds also go out to those who are doing it tough around the world right now. We think about those going through, um, through droughts in the Horn of Africa, Lord, um, that we donated to at Christmas. For those doing it tough now in Turkey and Syria, Lord, our hearts... Go out to these people who are going through difficult times. 
Um, we ask that you would mobilize your church, including us, to help out in each of these areas, Lord, that you would uh, stir our hearts, you would guide us as to how we can pray and how we can give, Lord, towards these causes. Um, importantly, that you would mobilize your church in each of these areas, Lord, that the, the church in the local area would be your light, would be your restoration power, we'd see your restoration power at work in each of these places, Lord, to firstly bring compassion and comfort to those who are suffering, but also to bring your goodness and wholeness, Lord, back into these communities to restore them, Lord, we pray. That your church would rise up, that you would turn all things together for good like only you can in each of these regions, Lord. Lord, we pray for Michael as he comes to bring us a message this morning, that his words would be accompanied by your spirit, already working powerfully in our hearts, even before he says a word, Lord, that you'd be at work in and through the message today, Lord, we pray. So as we come to our regular time of offering, Lord, we give you uh, our finances with joyful hearts, Lord. For those of you who give online, Lord, we just sort of remember now our giving to you and we just praise you as we give to you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, as I said, many of us give online, but for those of you who would like to give in person, we have offering buckets up here, so please come and put your money in the offering buckets if you like. Don't hesitate, just come come up. Thank you. Okay, please stand as we continue worshipping our risen King together. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, when we think of your Son on that cross, our trespasses, our iniquities laid upon him, and as he bled and as he died for us, that he would take away our sins. How amazing and great is your love and your mercy. In grace, we receive forgiveness that we may be called a child of God. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, receive all praise and glory and honour for you are worthy. And that is our song today. You are worthy. And our gracious God and Father, now we come before your word. We thank you for the time of worship, to sing, to praise you, to glorify you. And in your faithfulness, we ask that you speak to us. Reveal to us the truth of your word. And as we explore what it means to love you with all of our soul, Holy Spirit, enlighten, encourage and empower us to live out this truth to bear much fruit in accordance with your will for our lives. And we humbly and expectantly ask of this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to those of you who are new or visiting. Let me add my welcome. My name is Michael one of the pastors here, and thank you for joining us here in person and online. I'm amazed at how, beginning of the service, I thought, oh my goodness, where is everyone? Then the Lord brought you in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to thank the worship team as they're leaving and they're going. Thank you, Anka. Hey, I haven't even started yet. That's so unfair. And, and uh, yeah, preparing us to hear God's word. Thank you to all our volunteers out there. I see you guys in here as well. And yes, cameraman, thank you so much. And thank you for your willingness to serve and love this community of believers. Now, today we continue with our series on loving God. The main theme of the series coming from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, the word translated in English as soul in this verse is the Hebrew word nefesh, and it is used over, it occurs over 700 times in the Old Testament. Now, our general understanding of the word soul derives from Greek philosophy with the idea that a soul is a non-physical, immortal essence in a person that is contained or trapped in this physical body inside us, only to be released upon death. That there is a distinction between our physical body and our soul. There's a separation. However, this is not the case in Scripture. What we understand soul to be in Scripture is the Hebrew word nefesh, translated as soul in the Old Testament, it means a whole being. It means the whole person. That a human being does not own a nefesh, but rather we are nefesh, if that makes sense. We are nefesh. We are a soul. The whole of the living, breathing, physical being is nefesh. And hence, sometimes nefesh in the Bible is translated as life, as a person, even as breath. And this understanding and meaning is carried on into the New Testament with a Greek word, suke, where we get the word, English word, psyche. But to better understand Nefesh, let's look at a couple of examples. Psalm 119175, the author says this, Let me live that I may praise you. Now the literal translation says, says this, Let my Nefesh live 
Not let me live, that's translated, but it says, let my nefesh live that it may praise you. That their entire being, their life and their body offer thanks to God to praise God. Another example would be Psalm 42, verse 1 2, which says, As the deer pants for the water, as the deer pants for the water, my nefesh pants after you. My nefesh thirsts for the living God to know you and to be known by you. Nefesh, the whole of who I am, the whole of the living, breathing, physical being thirsts for the living God. So when we hear, love the Lord your God with all your nefesh, it means to love God with all of who we are. All of who we are. The total being of our life and vitality. The whole package is to love God. And so this begs the question, what does it mean to love God with the whole of the living, breathing, physical being, the very essence of who we are? And the second question is, what does this look like actually lived out day to day? Now to answer these questions, let's go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16 where we get an understanding of what loving God with all our soul looks like. So if you have your Bibles there with you, If you've got your devices, please turn to Matthew chapter 16. We also have it on the screen. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life, soul, will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul or life? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. This is God's word. Now, if you grew up or been in the church for a while, you will know this passage well. We memorize it, we cite it, and we try to live by it, you know, to deny ourselves, carry the cross, and follow Jesus. It's a call to be a follower of Jesus, a disciple. But what has this got to do with loving God with our nefesh? Loving God with all of who we are? Well, it has everything to do with it. It has everything to do with it. In short, we are told two things. So today you're going to get a two-point sermon, and if you feel ripped off, come and talk to me after the service, but you're getting two. Not a three-point, two-point sermon. So firstly, Jesus says, follow me, be a follower of me, desire to become my disciple, because either we will choose to be a follower of this world or a follower of the kingdom of God. And those who love God will be a follower of Jesus. That's the first one. Second one, Jesus says, follow me. Follow me in my footsteps. Live the life that I live, because either we will give our life for the world or give our life for the kingdom of God. And those who love God will give their life to Jesus. So let's unpack these two points. The first, follow me, is an invitation to discipleship. There is a decision that needs to be made. Now, nobody becomes a a follower of Jesus by drifting into it. There must always be a wholehearted commitment, not only a decision, but a commitment in becoming a follower of Jesus. Such a person is called to deny him or herself a total surrendering of their themselves, total surrendering of their nefesh to Jesus. This is our true love to Jesus, to surrender our nefesh to Jesus as we accept his invitation to follow him, to be his disciple. 
but our natural tendency is to affirm ourselves, to concentrate on what serves our own interest. We want to live for ourselves, for our best interest. Now, we see this in Peter. Preceding this part of the narrative, Jesus foretold his disciples of his death and resurrection. And Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him. I don't know how a disciple rebukes his master, but that's what Peter did. That this will never happen under my watch. You will not die, Jesus, not under my watch. Whether it was for significant security or identity, I don't know, Peter turned his focus away from Jesus and the kingdom of God and focused on the world. For the Messiah that the world was expecting was one who would deliver them from the oppression of the Roman Empire, one who will come with might and power to overthrow them. And this is what Jesus said to Peter. He says, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you're not setting your mind on the things of God. You're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man the things of this world. Jesus says, you have it wrong. You are thinking from a worldly perspective. That is what a worldly kingdom looks like. It comes with power and overthrows another kingdom. Don't allow yourself to be deceived by what you see in this world from a worldly perspective, but have an eternal perspective and be a follower of Jesus. Jesus calls his followers to renounce such self-interest, self-understanding, self-centeredness, self-assertion, self-pity, self-righteousness, self-serving, self-sufficiency, and self-love. I think you get the point. Jesus calls us to deny self, which is in opposition to what the world says. The world says it's all about me. It's all about the self. But Jesus says as a follower, it's not about me. It's actually about Jesus. Jesus calls us to leave behind what and where we find our significance. Leave behind our security and identity in the world, but find it in the person of Jesus Christ. Find it in Jesus. For whoever puts to death their passionate pursuit of seeking their significance, security, identity from the world for Jesus, there they will find life and save their soul. So when we offer our nefesh as a living sacrifice, this is the true act of worship and truly loving Jesus as Romans 12.1 says, offer our bodies as living sacrifice, as Jonathan said, for Jesus to offer our nefesh, the whole of who we are, as a living sacrifice. To love God with all our soul is to accept this invitation to become a committed follower of Jesus, to love his will for our lives and to live in that. Now, this invitation is for everyone. Jesus said, whoever. It wasn't just for the 12. He said, whoever, which includes you and me, to become his disciple. Now, we must deny ourselves surrendering our all and take up our cross, putting, death, putting self to death, but made alive in Christ. Made alive in Christ. Which leads us to our second point. So what does this look like to be made alive in Christ, to live in his footsteps? So the second follow me is an instruction for us to live in Christ, to follow in his footsteps. This is where we understand that there is a cost. There is a cost to being a follower of Jesus. As Jesus paid the price because of the love he had for us and for his Father, There is a price that we must pay in loving and living in Christ. It's either you give up the temporal to gain eternity or you give up eternity to gain the temporal. 
This world is passing away. It says so in Scripture. It's not my words. It says so in Scripture. If you want to attain something in this world, you will give up eternity. But if you pursue eternity, you need to give up the things of this world. Jesus, pro- Jesus proposes, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world? Attaining the treasures of this world. Now, if you haven't heard Dan's message yes, uh, last week, please go ahead and do that. Uh, because he talks about the treasures of this world. So I won't unpack um, that here now, but please go and watch it at home in time. So attaining the treasures of this world, yet to give up, forfeit your soul, your life for all eternity. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul for eternity? There is nothing that we can give or exchange or pursue to attain eternity. Now Jesus continues, For the Son of Man, Jesus will come in his Father's glory and with all his angels, then Jesus will reward each person according to what he or she has done. There is not only the spiritual but a personal implication to being a follower of Jesus. It's personal. Now, I want to introduce you to this book, if you have not read. It's called Not a Fan by Kyle Eidelman. All right? It's either you're a follower or you're a fan of Jesus. It's a great little book. Teenagers, young adults, please grab a copy. Now, Kyle Eidelman in his book, this book, points out three things that Jesus will challenge us as his followers, which will impact us personally and intimately as we look Uh, to the day of his return, and we live as a follower of Christ. He looks at the narrative in Luke chapter 9, where three people are offered to follow him, to be his disciples. We are introduced to them, who initially seem eager to follow Jesus. However, as Jesus challenges them, as they process how following Jesus will impact their life, they begin to make excuses and do not follow him. So if you've got your Bible, please turn to Luke chapter 19. Uh, sorry, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And let me read this for you. As they were walking along the road, a man said to me, I will follow you. I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. Jesus this time invites him, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. So through these three responses, these people, we learn that when we accept Jesus' invitation to be a follower, we will be challenged wherever, whenever, and whatever Jesus calls us to. As a follower, Jesus will call us to wherever, whenever, and whatever. And this is what it is to have Jesus in our lives. He will challenge us. Through the first person in the narrative, Jesus challenges us that following him is a journey of risk and uncertainty, where we will be taken out of our comforts and into something uncomfortable. Secondly, we learn that there is an immediacy of responding to following Jesus. The second person said, let me go and bury my father. On the surface, it looks and seems like a fair request. But what he really is saying here is, I will come and join you when my father dies. He wants to follow Jesus, but now is not a good time. Now is not a good time. But we are told that Simon Peter, his brother, the sons of Zebedee, the disciples, when they were called to follow Jesus, what did they do? They left with him immediately. When Jesus calls us to be a follower, 
He wants immediacy, not excuses. He wants a response now. Simon Peter, the sons of Zebedee, left their nets. Matthew left his job to follow Jesus. That is the commitment Jesus is looking for in us as a follower. And if we love him more than anything else, we too will do likewise. The last person in this narrative is asked to follow Jesus, but he first wants to say goodbye to his family. He wants to say goodbye. And once again, it seems like a fair request. But again, there is something else which is taking priority over following Jesus. As a follower of Jesus, we cannot be divided in our affection to him. What we value and are concerned about That is where we will be drawn to. Saying yes to following Jesus means saying no to my pursuit of the things of this world. In Ecclesiastes, the wise King Solomon states that he pursued pleasure. He pursued wine, wisdom, building projects, slaves, wealth, silver and gold. He had abundance of singers and a harem. Way too much. He did not hold back. And Solomon says, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. But in the end, when he surveyed it all, he admitted that everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. So are we willing to give whatever Jesus is asking of us? Are we willing to pay the price of following Jesus? And we know that in our hearts what that price is. We know in our hearts what it is going to cost us if we follow Jesus. Now, if you have no idea of what that cost might be for you, try and fill in the blank after this statement. Whatever comes immediately to your mind, into your heart. Jesus, I will do everything but. Jesus, I will follow you. Whatever, whenever, wherever, but. What's that but? As Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than these? Jesus is asking us today, do you and I love him more than anything in this world? Now, that's a huge question. That is a huge question. But it's a question that Jesus is worthy to ask of us. And he can emphasize with us in grappling with this question. To answer this question is a struggle. I don't know about you, it is a struggle. Do you love me more than anything in this world. I'll be honest, it's a struggle. Why is Jesus worthy to ask us of this? For he was asked by the Father, do you love me, my son? Father God asked him, him, do you love me? Do you love me enough to surrender that all you have here with me, to empty yourself, even to the point of becoming a servant, to die on the cross, that those who are lost may be saved through you? Jesus' response was, Father, wherever, whenever, or whatever you ask of me, yes, because I love you with all my Nefesh, the very essence of who I am. And because Jesus said yes, we too can take comfort in knowing that Jesus will not ask of us wherever, whenever, whatever, he hasn't been asked of of, of himself. We don't follow in his footsteps where he hasn't been before, but he knows exactly where he is taking us. And therefore, we can fully trust in him as we follow in his footsteps that 
And that's how we love him, to follow him in his footsteps. For he loved us first. And we, in this knowledge, as he calls us to love him as his disciple, to take us to the place where he wants to take us, we can trust him in this and follow in his footsteps. You know, some of you, um, those of you who know me well, I love to talk about myself. No, not really. I don't like talking about myself at all. But I was just prompted to share this with you. So last week, and it fits in so well with this passage. So last week, I was um, at a gathering, not this gathering, I was at another gathering, who potentially might come together with Mounties for the church plant. We are discerning through this process at the moment. So there's uh, young families, about 50, gathering, and uh, they don't have a pastor, and it's just a house church, close to the proximity of the area that we were thinking of, we are thinking of. And so I asked God, God, if it's your will, show me a sign, show me a sign. So I cast out my fleece, and I went there. Throughout the whole service, my heart was just open to them and warmed up to them in an amazing way. Now, those who know me, it takes a bit of time for me to open up. So I knew, I knew God was calling us together in this. And during this week, as I was preparing this message, God reminded me of a conversation that I had with Rachel and something that she said. She's more holier than I, so it's something that she said. Um, it, as we were praying together about church plant. And this is what she said. If God ever calls us to do a plant or ever calls us out of mounties, I hope that he will call us to a place where there's no pastor where there is no church, that something, he will do something new in that place, where people are lost and where people need to be found. And God reminded me this, of this conversation and he said, because I didn't, I didn't expect that it to come this quickly, so he said, you know, it wasn't your timing. It might not be the place where you're thinking about but the conversations and the things that you had in your heart, I've been directing that because I've gone before you and you just need to follow. He's already known about this group that will need a pastor, that it is seeking a pastor in the locality. We even thought about going to a country church where there was no pastor. There are country churches, a lot of country churches that needs a pastor. But he's been already working in our lives. But he calls us. You know, you need to follow me. Wherever, whenever, whatever I call you to. And it's not about me. It's not about us. It's actually about what God is doing. It's all about Jesus. So to conclude, brothers and sisters, let me conclude with this quote from this book before we come to communion. So Kyle says this, This is how God loves us and how he wants to be loved by us. Please understand, Jesus loves you so much. He died to have a relationship with you. He will not share your heart with anyone. He will settle for nothing less than your complete devotion and heartfelt affection. He made no compromises when he came and gave his life for you and takes no compromises now as he asks you to do the same. The reason Jesus is so adamant about followers surrendering everything is because the reality is this. The one thing we are most reluctant to give up is the one thing that has the most potential to become our substitute for Jesus. Really what we are talking about is idolatry. When we are to be following Jesus, who is ahead of us, but we find ourselves looking behind us, 
we are revealing that we are substituting something or someone for him. When we finally surrender that one thing, we discover the satisfaction that comes from following Jesus that was always missing when we were holding something back. I know the reluctance to go all in and give Jesus anything and everything. We are afraid of what we will lose. But Jesus says, do you love me? Do you trust me? Then surrender everything and come follow me. For this is the true act of worship and to love our Lord with all our soul. So as we come to communion, the bread and the wine is a symbol of the body of Jesus broken and the blood shed for us because he loves us. We were reminded that on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we are proclaiming that Jesus loved the Father with all his soul, even to his last breath as he hung on the cross. He surrendered and gave everything because of his love for the Father and for us. Family, let's take the bread now, but before we drink the cup, let's pause and be still. And let's spend some time in silent prayer. And we need to ponder and think about these questions. Is God calling you to follow him? And what is he asking you to surrender at the feet of the cross? What is, it, what is it that you are willing to say yes to Jesus, but? What's that but? Let's spend time with Jesus. Repent, seek forgiveness. Maybe give thanks, give praise. As we will find shalom and comfort in his love at this table. So let's take the bread now, if you haven't done so already. And in a moment I'll pray and let's drink together. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for saying yes to the cross. We live in the, in the shadow of that cross, your life given so that we may have life. Lord, help us each day that we may live with you and love you with all of our soul to be a committed follower. And wherever, whenever, or whatever you call us to, grant us the courage and the strength to say yes and to faithfully walk with you.
Give us the strength to love you with all of our soul. Grant us the wisdom to know and differentiate from the things of this world and things of the kingdom of God. Help us to surrender our all to you. And we pray in the matchless name, the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's drink, church.
Lord, we don't want to look back, but we want to look forward. We want to look to the cross. We want to see Jesus in our lives, and we want to bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. So help us in that, Lord. Continue to show us throughout the week what it is to love you with all of our soul and help us in that. Lord, help us to surrender the things that we have in our lives that we look to the world for, but rather help us to turn our focus on you for the kingdom and help us to have an eternal perspective, a perspective on eternity and live in the shadow of the cross on this side of eternity and we pray in Jesus name Amen Amen Thank you for joining us this morning I hope you were blessed by the service and if you want to uh, if you need prayer or if you commit your life to God I want to I want to hear about it it's exciting if you committed your life to Jesus so please I'll be down there there will be some ministry leaders around the place to pray for you Next week, we continue the series with Jonathan Anthony bringing the message on love thy God in mind and strength. Mind and strength. So may the Lord bless you and keep you as you head out into the week. God bless.